more Anambra business firms benefit in post-COVID-19 economic recovery program. Health education stakeholders to conduct survey on mosquito-borne disease in schools. President Buhari begs us to reconsider their position on the prolonged strike. And United Nations extends Syria cross-border aid to six months. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround, maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core evil values. Let us give him maximum support for the tax ahead. Good morning and welcome to the news. My name is Chidema Oranga. 260 micro and small business firms in the state have benefited in the first phase of World Bank Assisted Economic Recovery Program, TACT, and Ambra Cares post-COVID-19 solution for qualified micro and small business firms. Correspondent Joseph A. Watcher gathered that the beneficiary received the cash grant of between 1 to 500,000 Naira within the 23 financial institutions partnering in the program. His report. 68 others equally benefited from various IT enhancement grants such as laptops, printers, website hosting and POS machine at the unveiling of the Anambra Cares post-COVID-19 solution for qualifying micro and small business firms in the state at the Dora Akwenli Women Development Center, Oka. Performing the function, the Deputy Governor of the state, Dr. Nye Kachuku Ibezin, who congratulated the beneficiaries for being selected, encouraged them to make judicious use of the grants in order to expand their businesses, employ more people and improve the economy in line with the vision of the Saluda administration to make Anambra livable and prosperous. Dr. Ibezin, represented by the Deputy Chief of Protocol to the Governor, Office of the Deputy Governor, Mr. Emmanuel Obieze, also commended the Anambra State Small Business Agency, ASBA, financial institutions and other partnering agencies for the success of the program. <laughs> Earlier in his address, the managing director of ASBA, Sakilen Chukwoka, said 1,029 firms apply for the grants out of which the 260 beneficiaries emerged, adding that 769 more will benefit before the end of the year. The idea is to make sure that people create business traffic in their own various businesses. Our support is to ensure that micro and small enterprises will grow. Micro will grow to small. Small will grow to medium. Medium will grow to large. And that is the way to go. So this support are coming courtesy of Mr. Governor of Anambra State. And so it is important that the media will help us that this is real. Speaking on behalf of the beneficiaries, Comrade Ugo Chukwokeke, who is the chairman of Joint National Association of Persons with Disabilities, Anambra State Chapter, thanked ASBA for including persons with disabilities in the recovery package and promised to achieve desired results. The event had in attendance the State Commissioner for Budget and Economic Planning, Ms. Chiamaka Nak, represented by Mrs. Ogo Oji, representatives of civil society organizations and financial institutions partnering in the program. From Dora Akwele, Women Development Center, Oka, Joseph Ebocha reporting for ABS News. The Anambra State Cash Transfer Unit, in collaboration with the State Ministries of Economic Planning and Budget and Women and Social Welfare, has round enough the training of 500 Anambra youths under the Anambra COVID-19 Action Recovery and Economic Stimulus, ANCARES, with uh, beneficiaries in Oka North local government area. The four-day training, which was held in East Wanyocha, attracted the beneficiaries from the 10 communities that make up the council area. Correspondent Emmanuel Okonkwo has the rest of the story. Anambra COVID-19 Action Recovery and Economic Stimulus Program, ANCARES, 
is under the Nigeria COVID-19 Action Recovery and Economic Stimulus and Cares Program, World Bank assisted and is bossed by state governments through the State Cash Transfer Office geared towards making Nigerian youths self-reliant by empowering them with, with a sum of 200,000 Naira startup grant each at the end of the training. Addressing the beneficiaries, the State Commissioner for Women and Social Welfare, Mrs. Ifio Binabo, asked them to utilize the opportunity given them by the government to improve on their living standards. I feel, I believe, no way for men and do good. I Last week, I need to get a boss for this AG Cares, concern of the state government. On their parts, Livelihood Desk Officer Anambra Cash Transfer Unit, Mr. Christian Obiajolo, and Operation Manager, Social Transfer of the Office, Lady Florence Maka, reminded the beneficiaries of the need to invest the money in the planned businesses and to be serious with the business in order to excel. It is a wonderful experience, and I really thank God that I'm one of the beneficiaries. All thanks to the state government. It will look the automatic total, it will in your little mother. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. 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 Recall that the 500 youths of Anambra State were trained on various economic fields to help boost their knowledge on financial and business management. 50 persons from each of the 10 pilot local government areas of the livelihood program, which include Aguata, Anambra West, Oka North and South, Idemili South, Ihiala, Newi North and South, Obaru, and Onicha South, from Isua Noyocha in Oka North local government area. I am Emmanuel Okonkwo, reporting for ABS News. Special attention will soon be shifted to some selected primary and secondary schools domiciled in the River Rhine areas of the state to contain emergence of lymphatic filariasis, a disease caused by certain female mosquitoes that breed in most the marshy environment. This was disclosed by the Commissioner for Education, Professor Ngozi Chuma Ude, during a course of Cuts a call by the Carter Center for Health Education. Correspondent Theophilos Okoha completes the report. So Chumao, they said it is a welcome development and laudable initiative coming from a renowned Keta Center for Health Education to save Anambra school children from the mosquito borne disease. She, however, commended the team led by Mr. Afam Anene, promising to direct school heads in the selected schools to give them maximum cooperation. It is a very laudable initiative and coming from a very wonderful world character. Kata is one of the problems, the plates our people are afflicted with. And they said this is caused by mosquito. I, I am really grateful that such men, such initiatives exist. And, uh, as it pertains to school, uh, the school, is, uh, we have already done the need for. They said we should shift the uh, holiday by two weeks, which we have already done. Because this is a very wonderful and important initiative. It will save the life of many.
The seven-man team representing the Keta Center for Health Education, led by Mr. Afam Anene, visited to seek permission of the state government, Minister of Health, through the Ministry of Education, to visit some selected schools in the River Rhine areas and marshy environment to examine especially primary school children with a view to containing the spread of the disease born from a certain female mosquito whose health effects, if not checked, could result to a more serious deformity. According to Mr. Anene, the examination cum survey is Federal Government Ministry of Health initiative through USAID and Keta Center, focusing on vulnerable school children. The team leader said random tests will be conducted on the school children where positive drugs will be administered. now when it is done and this is our time, much of the session of other members of the team include Mrs. Ifoma Abaizu, Stella Ezepwe, Atama Isoma, Ndife Onyinye Chuku, and Emmanuel Obiwelo. The Permanent Secretary, Minister of Education, Barrister Nwando Obiano, was also present during the visit. Theophilus Okoha reporting for ABS News. Orca South Constituency One Stakeholders Forum has passed a resolution congratulating Governor Chukwuma Saludo on his successful completion of 100 days in office. The forum passed the resolution following a motion sponsored to that effect by Majority Leader Dr. Namdi Okafo and seconded by the President General of Orca Development Union Women's Wing, Mrs. Oge Ekwosa, during their meeting in Orca. Correspondent Chukwe Mekamodalim was there and rewards. The forum commended Governor Chukuma Soludo for the ongoing aggressive operations against insecurity in the state, the digitization of the state revenue windows to curb diversion of public funds, the rehabilitation of some strategic roads, voting of 60% of 2022 Anambra State revised budget estimate to capital projects, the reduction in cost of governance and the entire fundamental changes going on in the state as steps in the right direction. They appreciated Governor Soludo for finding some of their sons worthy of appointment into various positions of government and urged him not to relent in fielding further positions in the state with other capable sons and daughters of Okasato One constituency, considering that the constituency gave him the highest number of votes counted in the last governorship election. The forum enjoined Governor Soludo to pay serious attention to Oka Capital Territory and help correct the infrastructural development deficit that has kept the capital city apart for many years, even as they pledged their unalloyed support to Governor Soludo as partners in progress for the development of Anambra State. The majority leader of the House, Dr. Nnamdi Okafo, moved the motion while the Secretary of the One Constituency Stakeholders Forum, Mr. O.C. Onuko, read the resolution. That we pledge to continue in our unalloyed, unalloyed support to Mr. Governor as partners in progress for the development of Anambra State. Thank you. Hereby move a motion that the five resolutions as read by our Acting Secretary be adopted and passed as resolutions of the Orca South One Stakeholders Forum. I so move. Thank you. In his reaction, the immediate past Transition Committee Chairman of Orca South Local Government Area, Mr. Leo Moba, also described Governor Saludo's 100 days in office as eventful and the actions packed as the governor has continued to work every day to reposition the state. In Oka, Chukwemeka, Mordelem, ABS News. 
The 2022 Anambra AUJ Bloggers Summit has ended with a call on both social and conventional media practitioners to help in restoring the glory of Nigeria, plagued with so many challenges. The National Vice President of Ohanez and Debo Worldwide, Chief Damian Okeko, again made the call at the event that held at Godwin Ezebo International Press Center, Oka, in partnership with Life International Hospital, Oka. Correspondent Joseph Obwacha has details. The event, which has as its theme, Managing Information Crisis in the Era of Citizen Journalism, also featured special talk on in vitro fertilization, IVF, and assisted reproductive technology by the founder of Life International Hospital and Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, Nanda Zikiwe University, Oka, Professor Joseph Ike Shebelo. <laughs> When you look at it and assess it, you see it's an empty news. But if you see a news, you read it. when you read it, you go back and read it and make a new uh, Knowledge and education is a continuous process. Contributing the traditional role of Omonia in the local government area, Igwe Chris Onyekuluje, noted that growth and development of any society depend largely on the contributions of the media, among other things, called for sustained enlightenment of young people against illicit drug intake. On managing information crisis in the era of citizen journalism, a senior lecturer and head of Department of Research and General Studies, NTA College, JOS, Dr. Shinelu Dabe, and the former managing director and chief executive officer of ABS, Dr. Uchengora, represented by the former head of station ABS Onicha, Dr. Njideka Ezonye Jiako, noted that though technology has democratized communication, which gave rise to uncensored citizen journalism practices with attendant challenges, there there is need for proactive response to information management for the good of the society. God gave women this very privilege that they are the natural incubator for carrying the baby nine months and they will deliver the baby. Till today, all we have done in science, there is no other incubator better than the womb of a woman. In short, we have not found any. And so it is still a very rare privilege. No man has that, but it's only the woman. Man having the fifth estate of the realm. And the fifth estate of the realm is what? Bloggers or online publishers. Neglect them to your peril. I was the first to start blogging in Anambra State. And let me tell you when I was doing that, it was lucrative. I was enjoying it. My colleagues never knew what I was enjoying. I was enjoying it because all over the world they were calling me for one thing or the other. And I was daring. I was an Ambra State Commissioner of Police, Echeng Echeng, represented by the State Police Public Relations Officer, DSP Tochkui Kenga. An Ambra State Director of DSS, David Eno Power, represented by Assistant Director of the Service, Uche Oga. Former Commissioner for Information and Public Enlightenment in the state, Mr. C. Don Adenoba, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of ABS, Chief Shido Obidegu, among others, were present at the event that had Drs. Henry Duru and the Obiara Edogo of Mass Communication Department, Nanda Zikwe University, Oka, Mr. Cornell Osiigwe, an online publisher, Chief Choka Nabife of Anambra State Newspapers and Printing Corporation as discussants. From Godwin Ezemo International Press Center, Oka, Joseph Ebocha reporting for ABS News. President Muhammad Buhari has called on Academic Staff Union of Universities to reconsider their position on the prolonged strike, expressing worry that the hiatus will have generational consequences on family, the educational system, and the future development of the country. The president will receive some governors of the All Progressive Congress, APC, legislators, and political leaders at his residence said the strike had already taken a toll on the psychology of parents, students, and other 
the stakeholders, throwing up more moral issues that already beg for attention. President Buhari noted that the future of the country rests on the quality of educational institutions and education, while assuring that the government understands their position and negotiations should continue with students and lecture halls. The president called on all well-meaning Nigerians, particularly those close to the leaders and members of the association, to intervene in persuading the lecturers to reconsider their position and the ripple effect on an entire generation and the nation. President Buhari said students from Nigerian universities will be faced with the challenge of competing with others in a highly connected and technology-driven workspace and keeping them at home only deprives them of time, skill and opportunities to be relevant on the global stage. Abuja and Lagos residents may smile again as the Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NMPC, Mr. Mele Kairi, has assured that the horrific petrol scarcity in the two locations would vanish in three to four days' time. At all logistic challenges and supply disruption responsible for the nightmare have been addressed. Kairi made this disclosure in an interview with uh, after a paying salah homage to President Muhammad Buhari. According to him, the government has also resolved issues around pricing as President Muhammad Buhari has used his discretion to insist that petrol sells at 165 naira per liter. He said that there are issues around supply disruptions and they are overcoming them. He also said that they have resolved some of those issues and in the next three to four days, people will see relief and few queues will vanish. Abuja residents have battled a, a terrible energy crisis in recent months as petrol and diesel scarcity ground various businesses. Motorists now chase petrol tankers on the highway to no filling stations to queue in. Those who cannot queue are forced to buy a litre of petrol at 300 and 15 naira per litre on the average. And on the foreign scene, the United Nations Security Council looks set to continue crucial cross-border aid to millions of people in northwestern Syria until January, according to diplomats, after days of wrangling with Russia over the huge operation. The 15-member Security Council is expected to vote on the draft resolution for a six-month extension put forth by Ireland and Norway and echoing a Russian text. The operation to deliver food, medicine and shelter to the opposition-controlled area of Syria began in 2014 but expired on Sunday. It needs council approval to continue because it does not have the support of the Syrian authorities. The United States, France and the United Kingdom have argued six months is not long enough for aid groups to plan and operate effectively, but a proposal for a one-year extension, which was supported by 13 council members, who was vetoed by Russia on Friday. All the now sports, over 15 countries are already on ground for the Africa Track Cycling Championship built for the Mashud Abiola National Stadium, Velodrome in Abuja, from Wednesday, July 14 to 17, 2022. The Secretary General of the Confederation of Africa Cycling, CSE, Bashiru Mohammed, Sunday, disclosed this, according to Mohammed, the countries on ground are Morocco, Egypt, South Africa, Burundi, Ghana, Guinea, Burkina Faso, Algeria, Benin, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, Tunisia, and host country, Nigeria. Mr. Mohamed, who is also the technical director of the Cycling Federation of Nigeria, said the velodrome of the Abuja Stadium is already a beehive of activities as the various countries are busy putting finishing torches to their training. Remember that you can follow news and program on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television Orca. Follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. Log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And now the main points again. More Anambra business firms have benefited in post-COVID-19 economic recovery program. President Buhari has begged ASU to reconsider their position on the prolonged strike. United Nations have...
has extended Syria cross borders aid to six months. And here's a special message again. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround, maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core evil values. Let us give him maximum support for the tax ahead. And that's it on the news this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Chidema Orangwa. Good morning. This is ABS, Heartbeat of the East. Yeah, man, one, but now. No, 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 no